Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to The Christian and the Culture. This program is designed to help you as a believer in Jesus Christ adjust to the changing tides that are going through our culture today. What used to be sin is no longer sin. What used to be godly has now become something that we don't want to participate in. Where do all of these changes occur? Well, on The Christian and the Culture, we want you to look at the validity of the Word of God. We want you to understand that God never changes and how we can stand against evil in these last days. So grab your Bible and join us as we begin to explore the Word of God. Thanking God for our co-host, Pastor Brian Weatherspoon of Tabernacle Harvest Church in Pottstown, PA. Pastor, greet Pastor our Bishop, people. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Christian and Culture family, so good to be back with you all. Listen, you know what I'm going to tell you. Rules of engagement. Move the coffee table out of the way. Let's get started. We got a hot topic. Amen. And also joining us is our resident theologian, Pastor Tim Baldwin of Bethel Deliverance Northeast. Pastor, will you greet our people today? Christian and the Culture family, welcome back. We're so glad to have you. And um, as I always say, let's jump in. Yes, All let's right. Go. Let's go. So now we want you to understand that the Bible does give clear direction on how we should live in this world. Paul writes to Titus and said, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. It yes. teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, and we should live soberly, godly, and righteously in this present world. But what does that mean in a culture that is driven by capitalism and the Bible's teachings are contrary to singular capitalism? We need to know how to adjust. We need to understand what God is saying to us in the world as we walk in this world as the salt and light for Jesus Christ. Amen. Our initial passage will come out of 1 Timothy chapter 6, and Paul says, Godliness with contentment is great gain, mm. and if you find someone who really wants to become rich, he said, avoid them because there's a snare in looking to become rich. Now, gentlemen, is Paul telling us that we should embrace poverty? No, not at all. We should not embrace poverty. I don't believe poverty is of God. I don't think it's, a, it's not a kingdom structure. God supplies all of our need, and God is, of course, equipped to handle everything that you and I need. So absolutely not. Not a subscription to poverty, but a, but a, a, a humility towards, you know, gaining and accruing things in life. Not chasing it, but pursuing dreams and purpose. I think God is really into that. Mm -hmm. And if that happens to bring you financial reward, God bless you. Well, we, we, <laughs> see, that was he, a pause. He, yes. Bishop, I don't know. He, he caught me. That one, uh, uh, <laughs> Capitalism is defined as an economic or political system in which a country's trade or industry is controlled by private people for profit. Yeah. Does that yeah. conflict with the word of God, Pastor mm. Tim? Yeah, it conflicts with the word of God. I mean, even even when we see in Acts, back in Acts around chapter 2, 44-ish, 42-ish, where, where the scripture says, those who believed had all things in common. Yes. And all things in common, but they had this heart to to sell their goods and to, to take care of, of uh, those who were in need. That's more of a socialist perspective, mm -hmm. more than a capitalistic perspective. Yeah. And so, uh, and we know from the socialist perspective, it's like like the community owns That's it. things, yeah. you yeah. know. And so, so if you look at it from a, from that perspective in Acts, it's more on that side of the ledger more than capitalistic. Capitalistic uh, that perspective really breeds greed. Yeah. It really breeds just ungodliness because of our desire for gain. It's, yeah, and it's yeah. a dangerous, no it's dangerous. It. How has money impacted the church, either positive or negative? Wow. Uh, well, I think money has, has clearly steered the church in an offset. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the church that was powerful, robust, filled with the Spirit, uh, you know, identified gifts in the Spirit, Book of Acts forward uh, for the first uh, 19 to 15 years, the church is filled with power. It, it's, it's its own power source. And it doesn't need the state nor anything around it to assist it because it is fueled by the Holy Spirit. Somewhere like 50 years out, 
you start to see the church kind of migrate into uh, more cultural outfits, philosophy, and all those things are starting to kind of intercept and kind of interrupt a little bit the purity of Christianity, if you will. And so then you start to see that the promotion of titles and money and all those things started to come in uh, into play, which ultimately turns the heart of people. Hmm. So, so mo- money can be a defense. We do know Ecclesiastes says yeah, it, sure. but money can also kill your fire. And I think that's what we've seen in the church is instead of us chasing, questing after God's glory, most people equate that to mo- making money. Wow. And, and it's taking us off track. Wow. Pastor Tim, how has money impacted the church? Yeah, the money has uh, money has impacted the church. I think, from a a negative perspective, from 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 this from this viewpoint, uh, money is a defense, as the scripture says. And if the church really used money in a way that was a defense globally, not just the local church, the, the, the universal church, yeah. then poverty changes today, homelessness yeah. changes today. Yeah. But I think that what we're seeing is this heart towards like gain, towards financial gain, where now the church becomes more business than an, an organization like created by the Lord Jesus himself. Now we recognize there's a business aspect to running a church, we understand Absolutely. that, but it's become mm-hmm. so business driven, brand driven, systems driven, more than formula Holy driven, Spirit, yes. right? Formula driven. Yes. It's funny, I just got an email in my uh, inbox yesterday from some person I don't know, and they say, hey, can you use an extra 20 to 50 people in your church and we can help you do that, we have this formula to help you. So it's become formulaic more than anything, and and money is at the root of it all. Absolutely. You know, it's it's at the root of it. We have, you know, the preachers who just can't have enough. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's become become just dangerous ground. It's musicians, it's everybody has to be paid now yeah yeah wow. you know, singers preachers every yeah. everybody has to be paid and, and and this that's what i mean by not that money itself it has a bad sure. intent right because you can use it for good but when it starts to crowd your vision as to the ultimate goal you know if i'm a preacher is to give the gospel regardless of whether money's there or not if the goal is worship i'm worshiping whether money's on the table or not if I'm playing for the Lord, it's I'm going to do that with everything, whether money's on the table or not. And I think when money becomes the equation, then that's when you start to see the watering down and the 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 uh, the, the lack of fervency with it. It just mm. it just it just lacks the, the whole integrity of it. Now, the scriptures will give us a principle to apply. Yes, and and James talks about it. He says, "Religion that God our Father accepts as pure." and faultless is to look after the orphans and the widows in their distress and then keep yourself unspotted from the world. It appears on a couple of occasions, especially in Acts, where the formation of the overseers Mm -hmm. of the money and the disbursement of the same, uh, they were they were raising money to take care of those who could not take care of themselves. Right. True. So right. it appears that the care for orphans and widows rests with the church yeah. and not the federal government. It right. should. Right. It should. So when we see the federal government stepping in, yes, and many are saying, oh, the government shouldn't be doing that. According to the word of God, we should be looking after the orphans and the widows and caring for them. That's very true. Why aren't we doing that? Yeah, that's a good question, Bishop. I think I think because we're off task, we're off focus. We've not church today again has become business driven. Yeah. Again, is how much can we amass? How much can we buy? How yeah. how big of a sanctuary and edifice can we build? Yeah. You know, and Pastor Brian said it that yeah. that in today's culture, success is measured by material. Yeah gain and so so even in churches even in churches we we say churches are successful because of material gain but are they really successful because they have material gain that's a good question Mm. yeah and that's the question of the hour and 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 this is where you see that that challenge the duality of it all is you do need money to do ministry absolutely right so we're not we're not saying you don't need money to do ministry and even to live you need it uh however there's just uh, this this kind of pulling away that money has a way of pulling the heart 
in many directions. And I think that's what the scripture talks about. Those that desire to be rich are going to fall into many snares yes. because it will force you some kind of way, lull you into other areas that you probably don't need to be in or you can't handle. And, and the church is also falling in that as well. You know, we don't necessarily need theater seating. But because we have the resources or because we've seen it out there, we, we, we want, we're lured into getting it. We'll go into special campaigns that maybe you can't handle. Maybe you'll put the church out there in some way that it, it really can't handle the budget because you're, you're chasing something and you need money to do it. And, and we're going to go on this money drive. And, and it, just, it just lures you out into things if you're not careful. You have to be humble and really now, pray. Paul about. says in Ephesians 4.28, let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him get a job, right? I mean, I'll just paraphrase it. Let said. him get a job so he can have to give to those who do not have. Yeah. That sounds socialistic to me that I'm literally working to help someone else. Yeah. It appears that mm -hmm. from the scripture, God is more concerned about making us a blessing than giving us blessings. How do you feel about that? Mm. Yeah, Bishop, you... You're you're starting trouble because that that <laughs> word socialist is a it's a it's a trigger word for yeah. so many people yeah, yeah. when when we talk about socialism True. right yeah, and yeah. and the bad things about it. <laughs> Whereas this country we say we're capitalistic, but we have a very socialistic we do. Uh, 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 yeah. point of view yeah. when it comes to so many things. But I I do believe that God makes us a blessing to be a blessing to other Absolutely. people. I'm in total agreement with that. Absolutely. And I often say that you aren't blessed until you can bless someone else. I agree that's true. Yeah. That's that's true. Absolutely, yeah. To to do the latter would say you're completely capitalistic. Or of to course. do other than I should of say, course. you're capitalistic. If we study the heart of God with the children of Israel, our primary shadows, examples of how we should do it, that he's always dealt socially with them. They, they were always socialists. Like even when he was upset with them. Go into, I'll feed you all manner and get it by the portions of your families that you need it. If you have four, you get more. If you have two, you get a little bit less. But God was always dealing with them with a common wealth. We don't use a common wealth because that would say that maybe I've worked harder to amass this and maybe you, I feel like you didn't work as hard. So I'm not going to give the wealth to you because I work for this. It's a capitalistic sure. mindset. Yeah. We don't have the common wealth that God desired in the book of Acts. And I think that, you know, a person works for something, as you said earlier, they have an idea, yeah. you know, they take the idea, they parlay it into yeah. an opportunity, sure. that's great. But at some point in that evolution, there yeah. should be a part of them that says, well, let me help someone else. Of course. Bless. You know, there's a family. I, I, I've put young men through trade school and, yeah. and other things yeah. we've done you know, pay tuition for private schools for for, for kids who whose parents couldn't do it yeah. Yeah. because God blessed me. Absolutely. And yeah. I think my daughter asked me this question. She was five years old. She said, Daddy, why are there rich people in the world? Mm. And I thought, boy, even at a young age, she was right. a philosophical <laughs> yeah. person. And I said to her, I said, yeah. God gave some people a uh, wealth so that they could help those who don't have. Yeah. But now we're at a place where we can literally sit by and watch someone drown in poverty and not care and or not care. at the very least tell them they need to increase their giving to the church. <laughs> the more wow. you give, wow. then God will get you out of that. Right. And some right. folks need a little bit of a jump start sure. to sure. get moving. Sure. Everybody just can't pull themselves sure. up. Oh, yeah. But I want to ask another question. Pastor Tim says, you know, I'm going to get in trouble with this. So I'm out there now. I might as well drown. <laughs> Should Let's preachers go. be charging you for preaching the gospel when they come to your church? Wow. You know, Bishop, I I think that I don't think that we should ever put a price on the gospel. I don't believe that. We know the scripture says that a man is worthy of his hire. We we understand that. But I just don't think we should put a price on it. I think it's I think it's it becomes dangerous ground. Because what if I put a price on it and the Lord really gives me a word for your for someone in your car, if it's just one person right. who's in distress and who really needs to hear from That's God, right. and God gives me a word to to minister to their heart, and I say, "Well, I can't come because you can't pay me enough." Yeah, what what yeah. like where does that put us? Wow, I, I I agree. You shouldn't put a price tag. Right. It's it's a double edged sword. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you go. Let, let me say I'm this. Just, <laughs> that, just, I'm glad I'm glad he asked me the first question. I got the first, I got the first question. Just because you know, 
at least give me some gas money. You know, don't. don't. <laughs> well, I'm not saying I don't think that they should be compensated. If you don't say, there are places that say, well, we brought you in. Thank you for that beautiful message. We made a nice dinner for you. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> But it, it may not get me home. That's the bribe uh, you know, is capitalistic. You, no, 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 I'm not capitalistic to the point. I have some in me. But to the point that this should also be a common thought sure. to still be a blessing to a person that comes with the, with the message sure. or with whatever gift they're bringing. And I've, just, I've been to some churches where that's not even a conversation. Like, we're going to give you a chicken sandwich and... And you leave, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I'd rather, I, I'd rather have a you, discussion. That rubs you the wrong that way. That rubs me the wrong way. Just really? Just because I think if I'll go there again, yes, I'll go there again and preach. I won't discuss anything financially because, all right, well, I, that maybe you can't do that. So it won't stop me from going to a place if you can't do that. But I like to say, consider the fact that a person does have the drive, that a person does have to do things to get to your facility just to bring that word. So at least give me a, a Wawa card, a gas card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's I'm it's a saying. very it's a it's, it's very interesting. That, you know, we've kind of morphed into that in the 21st century. Yeah. Um, I think from a postmodern perspective, because ministry is viewed as a job. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. we think in terms of getting paid for the job, yeah. even to the point of using if the, the workman is worthy of their hire. Yeah. It depends on who hires you. Sure. Yeah. Theoretically, that church isn't hiring me. Sure. I work for God. It's true. And he may not want them to give me anything because he's going to give it to you. Well, that won't stop me from going. No, I, I understand I what clear. you're saying. Yeah, I understand not, what yeah, you're I'm saying. I think, I think the cultural reality is Ministry is now viewed as employment. Yeah. It's a job. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. it's right or wrong. Yeah, I'm right. saying that it has impacted yeah, absolutely. what we do. Yes, I mean, I've is. gone to many places <laughs> where the Lord, where they, uh, you know, I was at a place not too long ago and they were standing up to take the offering and I said, no, yeah. the Lord had told me, don't, don't, don't take anything, put yeah. it all back into yeah, the yeah. church. Yeah. So, and then he'll turn around and Bless, bless you, you another way. That's right. 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 And even right. if we believe he's a miraculous God, he may just fill your tank up while you're in there preaching. Well, that's true. And then you walk out and it's done. <laughs> well, and again, I'm not saying what you're saying <laughs> is wrong. I'm just saying that uh, the culture has so have a, has us so trapped in sure, that mindset. Sure, yeah. Because sure, I absolutely. get those notices, you know, from people sure. from churches. They'll say, you know, what's your that? fee? Yep. And I'll say a million dollars. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then I put smile yeah, next yeah, to yeah. it. Because what that. I bring you is worth a million dollars. It's the word of God. Now, I, I know agree. some people say priceless, but I just put, you know, a finite sure, term to yeah. it. It's worth that. Yeah. Now, that's not my fee, sure. but it's what I'm bringing you. Sure. Now, I think the mindset is... Uh, if we can rid ourselves of the need to have everything occupying us by profit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because that's absolutely. the mess we're in right now. I agree. Right now, the body of Christ is in a mess that says you, the only way to show your love to your leader is to give them something. Yeah. Now, in my world, yeah. the only way to show your love to your leader is to do what they tell you. Absolutely. Now, to me, that's cheaper and it's yeah. better. Yeah. In fact, I shouldn't even say cheaper. It costs say, it more to change yeah. your life. That's right. Because even but God says, you. God says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so people keep looking for ways to bless their pastor. Oh, I got to bless the pastor. Bless the pastor. Yeah. And I'm, I stand there and say, just do what I tell you to do, yeah. right. and yeah. I'll be happier. That makes everything and that'll good. open up windows of heaven yeah. because we're walking in obedience. Everything goes smooth. But when Paul talks about this, over in Timothy's uh, writing, he said, for the love of money is the root of all evil. That's true. What's he mean? Yeah. Yeah, because, it, you know, money is such an essential part of our culture, essential part of our lives, that the more we have, we believe the less problems we have, where mm -hmm. it's really on the opposite mm -hmm. side of yeah. that. But our desire to have it causes us to do things that are, that are not moral. Right. Things that are wow. underhanded, wow. you know. You you look at you look at anyone in society or culture 
who had a love for money and it drove them to steal from other people. You see some of the white collar crimes, yeah. you know, where people have have stolen millions and millions and taken people's uh, retirement funds and all because they have this love yeah. for money, for financial gain, yeah. and it, it brings us to ruin. And so that when Paul talks about that, it's that drive and that desire to that by any and all means necessary for wow. me to get it and to have it is what I'll do. Yeah. And that's that's what that's the danger of it. Yeah, it contends with pursuing God, right? That's what Jesus said. You can't serve two masters. Right. You can't you can't pursue us both. You're gonna love one, despise the other one. And I think chasing money or really, really, really desiring money uh, shows where your pursuit is. Your, your heart is in that direction. Now, it's fleeting. It's, it's vanity. The Bible calls it that. But it does prove where your heart and where your pursuit lies when we're really supposed to be pursuing the Lord with everything. And I always say it, when people fail to pursue God, the only other route you take is money because... Mm. You, you know, in some level, you, you equate having more with it being more godly. And so when God is not the equation, money and maybe other antics become the, the situation that you find yourself in. Is there anything either of you can think of where the drive for the accumulation of money has an honorable uh, uh, hunger? It's yeah. like, I'm chasing money for this, and it's honorable. Yeah, I think that that if you have a drive for it and it's for others, okay, it, you know, okay. if if it's going to bless others, okay. you know, but if it's just an accumulation for my my own coffer, again, it's it's dangerous. But no, I, that, I, would, I would I would I so would the young that. man or the young woman that's selling cocaine and other you know uh, recreational drugs, would you say it's love of money that's making them do that? Not always. Okay. Uh, sometimes it, 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 it's, it's straight up struggle. Really? Their world comes from struggle. And they don't, maybe they have no skill set, they don't know anything else, and they have to eat. And it sounds really bad, but there are some houses that it, there's nothing in it. And maybe there's other siblings they got to take care of, and even situations where the parent that could be is on crack or drugs. So yeah. that young person is in survival mode. Mm. And you know, the, the one of the, the easiest things to do, easy but yet hard, is to go out and find somebody that will tell you, here's how you can eat. Now, yeah. how can the church answer that question? Oh, man. How can we be a light and salt to that particular issue? We have to have enough in our conference where maybe we can give a job. Maybe we can help with some other life skills. It's one of the things we were talking about in our church. How can we bring life skills back into a place where the church is taking young people and then teaching them certain things? And then we know it's very easy for them to come to the church and the church could give something to that household. But if drugs are involved and addictions are involved, you and I both know money handling is not going to be yeah. the cure for the situation. Right. So right. they have to learn some kind of skill set yeah. and, and, and be taken off the streets. That I way. would rather when they come up and ask for money, I usually say rake up the, the leaves and yes. cut the grass yes. and, sure, and feel sure. good about yourself. Yes. Yes, and yes. then you get that mindset of earning. Yes. Right. And these are all socialistic ideals. They are socialistic. Yes. We don't want to just give you money, right. but yeah. we want you to earn it. That's right. what the Bible says. Yes. Let him that stole steal no more, but go out and get a job. Right. Right. Because That's I believe right. God, even when he made Adam, there's no sin, but he says keep until the garden. Yes, Watch it. Yep. Pick the fruit, work. you know, work, yes. because we yes, have a yes. work ethic That's inside right. of us. That's right. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. We <laughs> hope you enjoyed today's That's broadcast. Good. It is very, very important for you to realize that God does want to, to have all you need in life. He really does. He really does. It is not God's will that you live in poverty or despair. Right. That is right. not the will of God, and it is not a sign of your holiness. But he doesn't want the money and the objects to have you. Right. You shouldn't serve things. You should serve God and use things. Don't use people. Use things. Because our hearts should be directed towards the Lord. And as he fills us and keeps filling us with the Holy Spirit, we will be able to walk in the love and the peace of God. So we pray today that you've understood 
that your task is not to only accumulate. Yes. Work with your hands. You receive pay. You're good at investing. You have a good idea. God has blessed you in a way. Now look for somebody that you may be able to bless. Look for somebody that yes. you can help. Look for someone that you can say, well, let me help you with that. No, you don't want to enable laziness. That's right. right. But you do want to be able to bless a person yes. who's genuinely and legitimately struggling in an area of their life. Yes. The Christian and the Culture is a program that's brought to you under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. That's right. This is his program. And we want to encourage you to stand for God and be legitimate light to the world. Yes. In other words, you and I should be showing the world how to get it done because we apply biblical principles. Yes. Thanks for joining us today on The Christian and the Culture. We pray that you will walk in the clarity of the Word of God and experience the joy of the Lord. God's richest blessings be on your life and the peace of God go with you. The Christian and the Culture is a production of Bethel Deliverance International Church. Thank you for watching. Be blessed. People of God are raving about the Understanding End Time Events and Prophecy Conference. Ryan says, this conference broke down the scriptures into pieces that I could easily understand. Kyle offers, this conference helped bring a greater sense of urgency for me to share with the world the hope that lies within us as sons and daughters of God. And Doug adds, I would recommend any believer serious about their Bible to take a look at what this conference has to offer. This four session conference of teaching and dialogue will help you to better comprehend what the scriptures say about the last days. For your love offering of $30 or more, receive a copy of the entire seminar on CD or DVD. Call 1-800-550-3284 to order your copy today. Praise the Lord. I'm Bishop Eric Lambert. I wanna welcome you to the Eric Lambert Ministries website. On this website, you will be able to get information about books, CDs, DVDs, and even the printed word designed to help you in your walk with Christ. You'll find information about our YouTube channel and the services that we have at Bethel Deliverance International Church. And we want you to understand that our ministry is designed to lift up Jesus, to glorify his name, and to get you, the listener, connected to the power of the Holy Ghost. I am excited about the Eric Lambert Ministries website, and I want you to join us as often as you can, and we guarantee two things. You'll have a closer walk with Jesus. Number two, your life will be richer. God bless you. Access resources that will enrich your Christian walk today by visiting ericlambertministries.org. That's ericlambertministries.org. The Christian and the Culture is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV. Positively different.